In this video, we're going to talk about the implied volatility of the Black Scholes Merton model. So again, recall with these pricing formulas, we don't need to know them, but we've got the value of a European call or the value of a European put. And what we're going to do with these formulas, we're going to think about what variables we have in these formulas. So let's just put them together. We've got K, the strike of the option, T, the maturity of the option, so those are things about the option. We've got whether it's a call or a put, obviously. We've got S, the asset price, R, the risk-free interest rate, and sigma, the volatility of the asset. Now, of all of these, they are easily known. So, of course, if we're pricing a particular option, we know the strike and the maturity. And we know, again, if we're thinking about this option, we should know the asset price we can generally estimate the risk-free interest rate. Uh, one often uses treasury bills or treasuries to estimate those. The only thing we don't know is the volatility of the asset. Now, one can think of pricing an option as being equivalent to finding the correct volatility to enter into this formula. In fact, the choice of volatility allows one to generate any option price from the minimum to the maximum price. So if you go back to our option properties, section, you'll find we found the minimum price for a European call option and a maximum price for a European call option. And the volatility, a volatility very close to zero will give us that minimum price. And a very, very high volatility will give us that maximum price. So in many situations, our goal is to find the volatility. And we can use the volatility then to imply the option price. Now this works kind of in reverse often. Namely, we know the option price and we want to know what volatility generated that price. For example, the CBOE lists options on the S&P 500. It tells us bid and ask prices. So we know the prices of the option and what we're trying to find is the volatility. Of course, that begs the question, what's the model for? What's that pricing formula for if we already know the value of the option. And it turns out that the thing which is actually most valuable is not the price of the option, but actually the hedging strategy implied from the option, from that price, namely the hedging strategy implied from the Black Scholes Merton framework. Now we'll talk about that in a later video. First, I want to do an example. So on July 25th, 2016, at 1052 AM Mountain Standard Time, the following option prices were taken from the CBOE website. Maturity of the option was September 16th, 2016, so it's about two months. The strike was 2160, the bid was 3680, and the ask was 3790. We can look at the market on that day, and the S&P 500, when those prices were taken, was trading at 2162.3. We need an interest rate. We're going to use treasuries. And so one month treasury yields were 0.24% and three month treasury yields were 0.26%. And the option matured in about two months. So we're going to use 0.25% as the continuously compounded risk-free interest rate. If this were a longer dated option, we would need to concern ourselves a little bit with what kind of rates are those 0.24 and those 0.26 rates. But for as this option matures in two months, continuously compounded or some other compounding frequency doesn't really matter. Finally, the S&P 500 dividend yield was 2.06%. And we'll assume again, that's continuously compounded. And one side note here is in order to do this, we've extended the Black Scholes Merton pricing model. We haven't told you how, but we have for assets with a dividend yield. Now, using the formula for European call price in the market data we have, including the option prices, we find that the implied volatility for the bid price was 11.7%, and the implied volatility for the ask price was 12.03%. And of course, the fair price is somewhere in between, and so the fair implied volatility for this option is somewhere between 11.7 and 12.03%. Now, one thing we should note, in the market, options with different strikes typically trade with different volatilities. And this gives rise to what we call a volatility smile. 
For the S&P 500, options with lower strikes typically trade with higher volatilities as compared to those at the money, with at the money strikes. Now, this breaks the Black-Scholes-Merton framework. So we know immediately from the market that the Black-Scholes-Merton framework cannot be absolutely true. The market still finds it to be a useful tool, and the reason they find it to be a useful tool is that it's approximately true, and so those deltas, those deltas with which we hedge, and we'll see that later, but those deltas with which we hedge are reasonable proxies for the deltas that one should hedge with in the market.